many Christians soak themselves in movies like Harry Potter and vampire sagas, movies that are centered around occult practices that God says are an abomination to Him. Can Christians be entertained for hours on end by such movies without it impacting their spiritual lives, without grieving the Holy Spirit and reducing the power and effectiveness of their Christian lives? Are movies and shows like these just mere entertainment, or do they promote the occult to unsuspecting people in subtle ways? Next, let's turn to Harry Potter specifically, not to single it out, but because it's one of the leading movie franchises in history, and one that is openly based on occultic themes. Over the last 20 years, over 500 million Harry Potter books have been sold. The movie series has grossed over $8 billion at the box office. The entire Potter franchise, with all of the books, films, theme parks, tours, theater shows, and toys, now exceeds $25 billion. Consumer research shows that over half of all the children between the ages of 6 and 17 have read at least one Harry Potter book, and 25% of Americans have seen all of the movies, and 61% had seen at least one. Does Harry Potter stir up interest in witchcraft? That's certainly what Ed Hubbard thinks, the guy who founded the Witch School that has campuses in Illinois and Massachusetts. J.K. Rowling created a phenomena that brought magic to the forefront of human thought and unwittingly reopened a new round of ancient battle, Christianity's battle to destroy witchcraft in all its forms. Harry Potter has rekindled interest in beliefs that were already growing in the United Kingdom and the United States for more than 50 years, and that belief is a faith called Wicca. Film producer Warner Brothers admits that the first Harry Potter movie was an accurate portrayal of witchcraft, and even the author herself claims that one-third of the material was drawn from real witchcraft practices. A new exhibition at the British Library in London reveals how she relied on the real history of magic and alchemy to create her wizarding world in Harry Potter. I'm with divination in the Potter books because I make it quite clear that it, you get lucky once every million times. Witches and wizards in the Potterverse, they are morally neutral. You are as good or as bad as you decide to be. There's nothing inherently wrong about performing magic. It's simply a, an ability that some people have. Harry Potter books and films are full of magic, witchcraft, and wizardry. The lead roles are played by wizards, witches, and other magical creatures. Unlike other fantasy children's stories that contain witches and the like, such as the Chronicles of Narnia, the Harry Potter books do not have a positive biblical worldview. The distinction between good and bad can become blurred as both the good and evil characters participate in different types of witchcraft and magic. Witches and wizards in the Potterverse, they are morally neutral. You are as good or as bad as you decide to be. There's nothing inherently wrong about performing magic. It's simply a, an ability that some people have. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Light Channel Denmark. Today, we are so blessed having Will Baron with us again here in Light Channel from uh, Los Angeles. And uh, he has been with us several times now. Uh, many of you have probably read his book, The Sea by New Age, which is translated to many languages. And um, as we know, he was uh, raised in a Christian home but was deceived by New Age. But by God's grace, he came out of this spiritual um, battle, becoming a Christian again. And we praise the Lord for that. Uh, today, he's going to uh, talk about neo-pagan witchcraft. So what is that? I didn't know before he was going to talk about it today. And we are also going to talk about Harry Potter, which is very, very popular. So, um, do you realize that many seemingly normal people today consider themselves to be practicing witches? Doctors, lawyers, nurses, laborers, think about any job out there. The person you would least expect be, might be practicing witch. Did you know that we even have witches in our U.S. military? So what are you thinking about when you hear the word witch? I was looking up on the computer. I've just taped in. What is a witch? And then it was written. I read 
A woman thought to have magic powers, especially evil ones, popularly depicted as wearing a black coat and pointing hat and flying on a broomstick. So is that what you are thinking about when you hear the word witch? Well, it must be much, much more when you see that both doctors and nurses and military people are practicing witchcraft. So what is the Bible saying about this? In the Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, he says, do not learn to imitate detestable ways, including spirits, sorcerers, and witchcraft. So God is telling us, stay away from it. Do you know that we are in a spiritual battle? There's a battle between God and Satan. And what is the battle all about? It's about our mind. Although the number of practicing witches can be significantly um, depending on the source consulted, it is estimated that in the new in the United States alone, there are over 50,000 people, women and men, who claim to be witches. Wow, that's a high number, and maybe there even might be more. In uh, John 3, it says, people low darkness more than the light. So um, why is that? Why are people so drawn to what this wrong instead of searching God who wants the best for us. Um, the TV and movie industry is doing more than ent entertaining us. They are promoting the Wicca movement. On TV and in movies, witchcraft is made to look exciting, thrilling, romantic and good. Can we begin to see that the entertainment experts are making the practice of witchcraft all more acceptable. And then comes the question, as a Christian, do you know what you are watching when you watch the movie? In 1 Timothy 4.1, it says, don't follow deceiving spirits and the things taught by demons. So is it safe for us to watch movies? Actually, God telling us to think about. In Philippians 4 8, God says, Think about pure, lowly, and noble things. So, when you think about people who are maybe witches, is there hope for them? Can God save them? Can they get out of this uh, misery they have come into? Today, we are going also to hear about the witch, which to accept the Lord and now is testifying about his power. Let's pray. Yes, Father in heaven, you are so grateful, Lord, that you are a good God. You know each one of us and you want to have a personal relationship with each one. You want to be our best friend, one we can talk to about everything, one who wants to set us free from sin, wants to want one who wants to give us eternal life. Father, you know the spiritual battle we are in down here on this earth, and we need you all the time. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will open our spiritual eyes so that we can understand what this witchcraft is all about. We pray, Lord, for the viewers that you will open their eyes. We all need to have our eyes open. So I pray, Lord, that you will send us your Holy Spirit that guide and guide Michael's questions to will, and that you will just be with us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Eva, for the introduction. We have the pleasure again to have Will Barron from Los Angeles, California, which, as you probably know already, it's the author of the best-selling book, Deceived by New Age, a work published in around 10 languages, including an edition of in Danish, Pedraut and New Age, published by Dan Spofole. In this webcast, Will Bar Baron will answer and give us the answers related to Harry Potter and its connection to a neo-pagan witchcraft. Welcome again to our program, Will. It's a pleasure to have you with us. 
Oh, good to be here, Michael. Thank you, and Eva. Yeah. And for our viewers, if you haven't seen our first programs with Will, we would strongly encourage you to watch them. You can find these videos here on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. There is a playlist. You can find them very easily. Well, let's go ahead. This is going to be a very exciting program. We've been looking forward, very much forward to this program. We've encountered a lot of technical issues. Uh, we've been spanning. I believe that the enemy is very much against this program, but by the grace of God, here we are. Everything is being set up, and we have prayed that this program is going to go through. And just a note for our viewers, for everybody, we are not here to judge anybody. We are not here to point fingers at anybody. This is about a message of warning which is a message of love. So anything we're going to say, it's not related to any particular, any specific person. We are pointing fingers or we are warning toward the witchcraft, toward the pagan attitudes and the pagan ideas and philosophies which have penetrated the world today also through the Harry Potter uh, books. So, Will, you were a follower of the New Age movement for around 12 years, as I uh, remember, including four years yes. as a personal disciples of this uh, spirit guide, Joel Kuhl, under whose tutelage you took a vow to celibacy and was initiated into the New Age priesthood. This, this is your background, right, to answer these questions. Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah, I was involved about 12 years deep involvement in this New Age spirituality movement. Mm. All right. Well, because some people would probably, if they don't know you, if they haven't seen your webcast before, maybe the question will pop up. Who are you to, are you an expert in this area? Have you even been reading these books? Uh, why are we even here having this conversation? So why would you be able to recognize today and would you be able to recognize today any form of witchcraft well michael let me say that most of the witches and the male version the warlock or wizard uh they are just ordinary regular people mm. if they're in a witchcraft center uh, they may dress in robes mm. or they may not. But if you were meeting them on the street or in a supermarket or in a shopping mall, these are going to be ordinary people. Let me emphasize, people turn to neo-pagan witchcraft or as it's technically called the Wicca religion, the ancient Celtic Wicca religion. People turn to these practices because they need help in their life. Mm. They've got medical problems and traditional medical practice has perhaps not been able to help mm. them or is not helping them to the extent they would like. Uh, they've got problems in their relationships. They've got problems in their employment. Maybe they're students in mm. education and they've got challenges. Maybe they've got stress and anxiety in their lives. Or maybe like I had as a teenager, you suffer from phobias i have particularly was challenged with claustrophobia and anxiety so people are ordinary humans hmm. they're ordinary people and they're looking for help they're looking for solutions to the problems and that is how i got involved in new age spirituality hmm. myself i didn't get involved in neo-pagan witchcraft i got involved in more the conventional traditional occult mm. aspects of new age the theosophy movement but uh, the teachings are very similar in most most of these new age practices it's just the packaging the external packaging is different so when you talk about warlocks wizards witches you're usually talking about ordinary people that are looking to these mystical and occult or hidden mm. regimens in order to find solutions for their life, in order to mm. find happiness, in order to find fulfillment, in order to find uh, contentment. So 
they're going to be just ordinary regular people like you and me that get involved in this type of activity yeah that's very good point and just to continue your thought your line of thoughts is just not necessarily these people have any idea of what they are actually doing or they're looking to work for satan you know to be possessed by demonic power and to be evil people or just to be some evil power uh, on this planet that's not necessarily the case as you're pointing out yeah. yes uh, there is a huge difference between satanism mm. and the church of satan which was founded originally in san francisco in california huge difference between mm. satanism and witchcraft now in traditional christian language the word witchcraft applied to any kind of practice religious practice spiritual practice that was not mainstream christian it was a very generic word so it could include astrology numerology tarot cards anyone practicing those divination techniques could be labeled as a witch but mm. since the harry potter series of books were published what around 1997 and onwards and then you had these massive movies uh, uh, that were viewed by millions mm. and millions of people since harry potter the use of the word witchcraft or wicca as it is called in the celtic religions has become more closely defined and witchcraft now is more closely focused on this neo-pagan religion of wicca hmm. so witchcraft and wicca are, are, are the same thing wicca is is a more technically defined expression for those practices all right but well, it is not yeah. saying is in fact one of the main teachings of the wicca religion one of the main teachings is that satan does not exist hmm. conventional new age teaching which derives from theosophy the theosophical society founded by madame blavatsky one of its core teachings is that satan does not exist so we we must keep in mind that people that claim to be wiccans or witches or wizards they do not even believe satan exists they do not in any way regard themselves to be following some sort of evil satanic dark power mm. not at all no exactly that, that was actually my my thought thank you for that well now we're going to point to some of the aspects which we as christians and seventh day adventists we we are not hiding uh, hiding behind any uh, any corporation or any church this is who we are of course we do have let's say our glasses we see we see reality through through the bible right so we see many of these practices that we're going to mention that we're going to name as being occult so what is occult you know we, we have a definition from the bible here and before we go there as you mentioned back in the 70s when the state of california officially recognized the first national church of satan as a church authorized to perform marriages, baptism in the name of Satan. The rebellious race of mankind took another step toward fulfilling the words of Revelation, as we read here in Revelation 13. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was heal healed, and all the world wandered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and we stop there because the verses covers uh, fulfillment of uh, prophecies and so on but our focus tonight is going to be on the occult part and who is this dragon and even if as you said before a wicca people wizards which is doesn't even recognize or accept that there is an entity such as the bible describes as satan or dragon as we've just been reading here in revelation uh, 13 who uh, and so on so now since the 
formation of this first national church, it is claimed that it's hardly a major city in, in America who, without a branch of this, what we call a cult religion. And again, the, all, the word occult is used loosely to cover all forms of the so-called supernatural. Is that so? Where you come from? Well, yeah, yeah. The word occult simply means hidden. Mm -hmm. So, people that practice occult spirituality or occult religions, occult practices, they are uh, involved in activities which is not the normal type of activity. For example, Christianity it was the most common religious practice, certainly in Western countries, and it mm. still is. Uh, there's nothing hidden about Christianity. You've got church buildings, you've got cathedrals, you've got congregations, you can walk into any church uh, and join their worship services, you've got their worship on television. Yeah. There's nothing hidden about it. The idea of the occult spiritual practices is these are not practices that you will see openly. These are practices that people are involved in on a more hidden basis, although, of course, it's not becoming mm -hmm. hidden anymore. Uh, the occult practices and the occult spirituality is becoming more mainstream. So we're seeing newspaper articles, we're seeing television uh, documentaries about this occult. It is really no longer hidden. But it pertains to secret knowledge. Another word is esoteric or mm -hmm. secret knowledge, knowledge that is privy to just the people that are initiated into these spiritual teachings. And mm -hmm. this occult covers various topics, various mm -hmm. organizations. I mean, there's literally thousands of them. Uh, mm -hmm. of different organizations, different authors, different teachers, different paths. But they have a lot of teachings that are in common. One of them is that Satan does not exist. Now, when Anton LaVey founded the Church of Satan there in San Francisco, I honestly don't know if Anton LaVey himself believes in Satan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was... Uh, a person uh, somewhat of a sensationalist. I'm sure that he was sincere about what he was founding, but my research, and I, I personally was never involved in the Church of Satan or Satanism, but my research indicates that many of the people that are members of the Church of Satan do not believe in the existence of Satan. It's mm -hmm. more of a community organization. It's something... Uh, they join out of fascination. But there are others, and, and I have counseled people that have belonged to the Church of Satan that literally believe in the existence of Satan. They mm -hmm. believe he is who the Bible says he is, but they believe that he's powerful and mm -hmm. he can bless them. And if you worship him, if you follow him, that he will bring primarily financial prosperity into your life. He will bring romance in your mm -hmm. life. So you do have some, some Satanists that really do believe uh, Satan exists. But most, mm -hmm. I would say, 99% of people that are involved in what we could call the New Age movement or New Age occultism, 99% do not believe in the existence of Satan. And they are actually very deceived through that belief. That is one of the most deceptive beliefs hmm. that the whole New Age occult movement has. And, and that is why people can be controlled by these spirits because they don't know that Satan is existing and that evil angels are actually the power in all these occult teachings and practices. The people that are involved in them are totally ignorant, as I was. I, had, I didn't believe in the existence of Satan at all. So if you're having mystical experiences as part of your witchcraft practice, you, you would just automatically assume these mystical experiences must be coming from God, from deity. They must be, because you don't believe that Satan exists and that these experiences can actually come from a satanic source. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you for covering that and uh, the, the, the word occult. Now, 
as based on your experience, your knowledge, and what we've been covering so far, we're going to cover some more. Do you believe that there is a strong connection in between Satan's church and the occult? Well, as, as I mentioned, there is no direct connection. But what is a reality hmm. is that Satan and his evil angels are the power behind this new age hmm. mystical movement that includes witchcraft, neo-pagan witchcraft, which is what the Harry Potter books endeavor to describe. Hmm. Um, may I also add that I don't believe that J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter books, uh, believes that she is inspired by Satan and his evil angels. Uh, she was inspired in her own biography. She does claim that she was on a, a, a railway journey by rail uh, between the cities of Manchester and London in England, and she received this inspiration, this mm -hmm. sudden passionate inspiration for the story of these books. Uh, I believe that Satan's evil angels, they work in our lives often unconsciously. They inspire mm -hmm. us. They put ideas and imaginations in our mind, and we're not even aware of it. But absolutely, I believe that all of the New Age spirituality, including neo-pagan witchcraft, I believe it, it, it all is coming from Satan and his evil angels. The mm. practitioners don't believe that, of course, because they don't even believe mm. that Satan exists. But, but isn't absolutely, that, this is all satanic. Right. Isn't that so that Satan, based on your experience, and you just mentioned that, but I just want to emphasize the, that this is his, the best way he's working, undercover. And actually, this is what you just said, that occult means. It actually also means undercover, in the hiding. Yes. Okay, this is his yes. best method, because if he was working in the open, I mean, a lot of people would, even all these uh, people that we're going to mention, the wizards, the weekend people, maybe the New Agers, they will, by some reason, they will, of course, try to get out if they actually realized that they are inspired and working for Satan, the evil force, or whatever you call it. So isn't that the best method to work with for Satan? Absolutely. Uh, and that's the way it works. That's, and, yeah. of course, God works in a similar manner. We cannot see God. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that Jesus incarnated as the Son of God and in his day there in Israel or Palestine, Judea, uh, people saw him, they heard him, uh, the disciples lived with him day by day for about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. But our Christian religion is primarily based on faith. We have our scriptures and I believe that God has his own good loyal angels, but we can't see them but they influence us. The power of the Holy Spirit is a real power, but we mm. cannot see it. Mm. Uh, Jesus mentioned that it's like the wind. It, you can hear it and it, you can see the tree branches bending. You mm. know it's there because of the effect that it has, but you cannot actually see the wind itself. Mm. All right. I so, a, so, yeah. Okay. I have a quote here from Kurt Koch in his book, A Cold Bondage and deliverance points out that the term uh, term occult applies to astrology palmistry card playing psychometric clairvoyance other forms of fortune telling plus all types of magic such as healing inflicting a diseases love and hate magic curses fertility charms persecution defense magic witchcraft spiritism Satanist telepathy and ESP and if you could point maybe do you have some more to add and what is actually ESP could you explain that a little bit yeah um, I would agree with this author on on all of his points except where he mentions inflicting diseases mm. to be fair to the practitioners of the occult and Wicca uh, witchcraft uh, it is forbidden within those spiritual practices to uh, inflict harm. One of mm -hmm. the central teachings of neo-pagan witchcraft is that you do not uh, inflict any harm on anyone else. Mm -hmm. Inflicting harm is known as sorcery, 
which is is different in sorcery which is part of the shamanistic practices the shamans uh, of different cultures throughout the whole world uh, you could for example if you want to take revenge on someone that's done something wrong to you uh, maybe they have stolen something from you or maybe you purchased something and you mm. you paid too much for it but it was intentional the seller deliberately deceived you and sold you something that was not the correct value in the shamanistic cultures you could go to a sorcerer and they would practice what is known as black magic mm -hmm. and they would go through incantations and rituals with the intent that harm would be done to your enemy but that is not part of what we call witchcraft or magic this mm -hmm. neo-pagan witchcraft uh, not at all uh, we, ha we have to be fair to the people that are practicing yeah. this uh, they're sincere but sorcery especially black magic is something very different altogether but certainly all these different methodologies like mystical healing chakra balancing astrology numerology yes mm. these and many more topics are all part of what are called the occult these secret mystical teachings that uh, are becoming very popular today as an alternative to traditional right. orthodox christianity well how would you then classify and as a matter of fact one of our guests here in the studio she used to practice actually voodoo which is very close to, to shamanism, as you just mentioned yes. before. Yes, yes. Uh, she, she was actually practicing and within her family inflicting of diseases as, as a form of yes. punishment. People coming to them and, and they will do whatever they did uh, to inflict these diseases. So how would you classify that? Uh, if, if we have boxes, you know, you cover the occult box, how would you classify then this kind of because as we, you and I know as Christians mm -hmm. all of this comes from the same source the same evil source yes the voodoo and the shamanism the also known as brujos in the Spanish speaking countries this would be we would have to call that black magic whereas the traditional magic of witchcraft we could call white magic and mm -hmm. there is a huge difference between black and white and most of the new agers uh, uh, you know i'm sure 99 percent of people that are involved in new age are not involved in black magic at all uh, mm -hmm. some possibly are but uh, it would be i think very very few but they do exist they are out mm -hmm. there yes so they actually within new age community within the these occult practices there is an open an a knowledge differentiation between black magic which they will not practice because they see as evil but at the same yes. time at the same time they do not acknowledge satan so we've discussed this before will but what is then evil and where does evil come from within the new age within these occult practices if they do not knowledge satan so this is the that's a, a very good <laughs> question the i'll give you the official answer from the new age spirituality movement and this is an answer that comes from theosophy mm. uh, the books of alice bailey evil is simply equated with ignorance a lack of knowledge so the mm -hmm. issue becomes people need to be educated and they need to come into a knowledge of the occult or mystery or hidden teachings. And if they come into a knowledge of these teachings, their ignorance is then removed. They are now what is known as enlightened. They now have light. They now have knowledge. Of course, it, it is a deception because mm -hmm. in reality, even the white magic is all truly from Satan. That is my personal belief. Mm -hmm. That was my discovery after being involved in these practices for 12 years. I, I knew exactly what they were. I was very deeply involved yeah. in them. And when I was rescued from that terrible deception, there's no question in my mind that Satan is real. He's more real to me uh, than mm -hmm. what 
real people would be. He's absolutely real. He, and his evil angels are absolutely real. And they have very powerful energies and that they can afflict you with. Uh, they can afflict you for good. Satan can give people high experiences. Uh, there were times in the New Age movement when I felt absolute euphoria, mm -hmm. absolute delight and joy like I, I, I've never experienced. Mm. And that's because the demonic powers, the evil angels, they can beam different kinds of energy on you. They can beam positive or negative energy. They have that power to, uh, to do that. And when they beam the positive energy upon you, you then seem to have a confirmation. Well, this must be from God. This must be a blessing. This must be something that is good. But it is all it is all part of, of the deception. Right. And of course, when when you uh, are disobedient to these spirits, to the spirit guides that you have, they can then also be very negative, depressing energy upon you. And mm -hmm. that, again, can be a deception where you think, oh, I'm disobedient with God. I need to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And then when you're obedient, the demonic powers withdraw the negative energy and you think you are now once again blessed by God. These evil angels, they, they manipulate human emotions. Not all of our emotions are the result of our own nervous system and the uh, different uh, chemicals that are inside of our body that are affecting us for good or bad, the healthy mm. food or bad food or whatever, or viruses or toxins. Uh, we are all uh, at the mercy and to an extent of satanic power that can manipulate emotions and feelings and mm. certainly our thinking can be uh, manipulated by right. evil spirits okay well i believe that you and i and a lot of other people at least within christian community will totally disagree with the definition of evil as being just ignorance and i will just mention two major examples which probably everybody should know by now in the history, and that is Hitler and Stalin. And I do strongly believe that whatever they did, you know, killing all this, being part of this process of killing millions of people, Hitler and Stalin, they didn't do it from just pure ignorance. So, so I believe the definition is a, it's a pure oxymoron, at least in my understanding of, of yes. what uh, evil is. But let's move on because we have uh, Ellen White, she uh, some years ago, Ellen White, which is being regarded as a prophet of God of, of the Bible, declared, and we read here that it is fondly supposed that heathen superstitions have disappeared before the civilization of the 20th century. But the word of God and the stern testimony of facts declare that sorcery is practiced in this age as verily as in the days of the old time magicians. The magician of heathen times have their counterpart in the spiritualistic mediums, clairvoyants, and the fortune tellers of today. Could, now the question is very important, could a veil be lifted from before our eyes, we should see evil angels employing all their arts to deceive and deploy. So now, Will, by the grace of God, this is actually what we will try and what we are trying to do also in this webcast. It's lift the veil so anyone interested in, try to lift the veil anyone, for anyone interested in an everlasting life can see the evil angels behind life uh, behind uh, stories, sorry, like Harry Potter, which is there to actually deceive and destroy. And the question is, is this an easy task for you and I? I don't think it's an easy task. Mm -hmm. um, it is a difficult task. Um, people slowly get involved in the occult. It, mm -hmm. You just usually don't dive into it. It's, it's a very gradual process for me. It started out with an interest in self-help psychology and eventually I became totally controlled by demonic spirits. But I believe these spirits were from God. Mm -hmm. So you have a inner conviction 
within your own mind and within your own heart that these occult practices are from God and that they are beneficial and that they are useful. So it is not easy uh, to expose this. It is, in fact, very difficult. Satan is the master deceiver. He is the mastermind. Um, we are seeing today a manifestation of the occult like never before. I mean, I first started getting involved in the New Age movement in the mid-1970s. Hmm. In those days, anyone involved in the occult was regarded to be a weirdo, kind of someone that was just not normal. This, this was just not part of normal culture at hmm. all. It, it was literally hidden. People would practice Wicca religion in secret. What we are seeing now in our 21st century is a open manifestation of these practices where mm. on television, on radio, on the internet, mm. you have got uh, these events occurring. Uh, it's become very much mainstream. And of course, right. I, I would say the most obvious mainstream manifestation of the occult is the practice of yoga and mindfulness type meditation, properly called transcendental mm. meditation. This is now practiced all over the place. You can find this in health centers, in hospitals, mm. in gymnasiums, all over the place uh, that you'll find. But it, it's just evidence now that mm. this has become mainstream what was right. once hidden what was once minority is now mainstream and mm. it is it is not easy to expose it mm. because you're talking often complicated philosophies that sound good that sound right but when you probe deeper and when you evaluate these practices compared to the bible you find that they are totally opposed to biblical mm. teaching. The Bible clearly teaches the existence of Satan. Uh, Jesus, more than anyone, mm. warned about Satan. Yeah. Uh, and so we find that the test really is the Bible. If we are just going by cultural standards, right now the occult has got strong cultural yeah. acceptance. It's only through the Bible mm. that we can expose the occult and witchcraft, Wicca religion, yeah. expose it to be the satanic deception that I believe firmly in my heart it is. So the occult, it seems that prevailed compared to Christianity, compared to the Bible. And as you mentioned, compared to mid-70s when you got involved into the New Age movement, it seems that today the occult movements, and we're talking about the whole box here of what we've mentioned before it's a tenfold or hundredfold compared to the mid 70s has increased oh yes yes absolutely yes and it, it kind of has become like the new normal the mainstream like almost everybody thanks to the hollywood you know a lot of hollywood actors are practicing yes. a lot of this occult stuff and they've kind of become the role models for a lot of teenagers. And this is one of the main reasons why we're having this conversation here. Well, let's move yes. on because I have a quotation here from Marcia Montenegro, which herself, uh, a former occultist, says that the occult is an umbrella term which includes many practices and belief systems. These beliefs are usually based on the idea that everything is or contains energy, and one can access, change, channel, and or manipulate this energy or force for the purpose of gaining either information, healing, or, as I've underlined, bringing a desired situation or a thing into material reality so the cult is an umbrella term this is what she's saying here right the cult is an umbrella we just covered that she was she used to be herself as i mentioned a former occultist so let's have a look at some of the uh, now the characters in in the harry potter's books we've said we're going to cover this 
and movies. And this uh, first webcast, this is part one, this is going to be an introduction. And we're actually kind of setting the ground here, why we're gonna have this conversation, why we even use the term occult, where does the occult come from, and what does it cover before we even have the understanding, why we're going to actually underline and pinpoint some of these characters and some of this wording and situation which are being described in the Harry Potter books and movies. Because many critics have said that no actual occult practices or teaching can be found in the Harry Potter books. It's just pure, funny entertainment. But is that so? Let's have a look. Others have said, while there might be things that resemble actual occult practices, they are harmless. So again, let's have a quick look at one character to tonight here, which is Herminon. And just have a look here. I managed to get a, a, a GIF here, a GIF. And in the book here, in the story, Hermione is actually cooking here. And this is actually what she's doing. That's the story from the book. And in uh, this is from uh, the movie as well. Now, further, Wikipedia states the following in regards to Hermione that this character had had immense popularity. The version of Hermione portrayed by Emma Watson in all eight Harry Potter films from number one in 2001 to the, six, to the last one in 2011 was voted the best female movie of all time in a poll conducted among Hollywood professional by the Hollywood Reporter in 2016. Further, Wikipedia, we read about this uh, character, Hermione, Jean Granger, I don't know how uh, you pronounce it, is a fictional person in the books of Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling, and she goes to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and lives at the college Gryffindor along with Ron Wesley and Harry Potter, who are her uh, best friends, her parents, her muggles. The name Hermione is carried from the Greek mythology by King Menelaus and the beautiful Helena's daughter. So the first question, Will, to you in, in regards to what we've just seen so far, do you believe these above statements, the statement that things that we assemble actual local practices, they're actually harmless, are correct, that there is no link to the occult? We've just seen, that's just, just a small part from Harry Potter, just one character. This is really a very profound question. It's a, it's a broader question, mm. and that is, can fiction influence a viewer or a reader? I can only tell you from my personal experience that I got involved in the occult, in Eastern mysticism, Western occultism, practicing most of these practices that people in, in the Wicca witchcraft practice, but perhaps under slightly different names with a different emphasis. I got involved in this stuff through reading fiction books. The particular book that, that I read was the Carlos Castaneda series of books. Uh, this is uh, one that, that I've just got a sample. Carlos Castaneda was a writer, somewhat similar to J.K. Rowling, uh, writing fiction books about sorcery, about mysticism. Uh, this particular book is titled The Power of Silence. Uh, his first book was titled A Separate Reality, The Yaki Way of Knowledge. Mm. And he followed that book, with, which became a bestseller, with several other books. Now, uh, Carlos Castaneda is a fiction writer. But in his fiction writing, he is actually describing real sorcery. But it's mm -hmm. fiction. Does this is this fiction harmless? Mm. I would say in my case and in the case of many people, 
I, I've met lots of New Agers that got deeply involved in the occult through reading occult fiction books written by Carlos Castaneda. When I read those books, I sensed there had to be a real version of what this book was describing. Somehow, my heart was yearning for the experience that I was reading about in these fiction books. Mm. And I decided that I was going to search for the real sorcery that mm. Carlos Castaneda described in his books. It was a goal. It was a life goal of mine. And I certainly found it in a New Age Center in Los Angeles called The Lighted Way, where many of the teachings were real teachings that Carlos Castaneda was describing in his fiction books. So I think we will have a parallel with Harry Potter. Yes, it is fiction. Yes, if you read this and you, in your mind, constantly think this is just fiction, this is just the imagination of a creative writer, it, it could be harmless, it's possible, but I think there are many people, we, there's no way we can tell from statistics, we mm. just don't have access to the data, yeah, but yeah. there are many people who will read Harry Potter, especially young children, and they will be seduced by the concept of the mystical powers that are described in the Harry Potter books. The fact that inanimate objects actually have mystical powers. The fact that you can recite rituals and incantations and they will have power to manifest themselves in the real physical world. Mm. Uh, we're talking about things like I've got a disease, I've got a sickness, and maybe this crystal, I can put it under my bed or put it under my pillow or something, and this object will draw mystical power to itself, and that power then will reflect into my body and bring real physical healing. This is what mm. the occult's all about. Uh, it's all about healing, it's about prosperity, it's about success. It's about using hidden mystical powers from teachings or inanimate objects and believing that they can achieve certain objectives that I have in my life. As I said, healing, success, financial prosperity, better employment, better jobs. So th there's no question that there are teenagers, even young children, that read Harry Potter and then move on to study the real mm. witchcraft, this right. Wicca religion. There's no mm. question about that. This is this is yeah. how it works, basically. How, how old were you when you got involved and you were actually reading that book you mentioned? Yeah, I was about 27. All right, about 27. Well, about 27 years okay, of age, yeah. Okay, well, what you just said before, you some of your last words that it's about healing it's about prosperity and so on but isn't that the commercial side isn't that the outwardly side because the hidden the real hidden agenda which is being described in the Bi bible is the evil one which probably all these peoples which get involved and also when reading harry potter wa watching these movies does it really, do you believe that they will have an impact, especially on children, which are exposing themselves to the books, to the movies, and to the toys, the full paraphernalia of package which has been kind of commercialized today after so many years? You know, this is genuine occult rituals, and in fact, uh, are, are being shown that these practices have actual power they can learn to use in their own life. So do you believe that small children, and even you, you were 27 years of age, did you know that that was just fantasy or just harmless fantasy since you, you know, <laughs> You actually imagined yourself going into that world and you actually ended there? Well, Michael, let me say, though, that uh, 
at a much younger age, uh, in my very early 20s, maybe late teens, I read a book on out-of-body experiences and believed mm. that this was possible, but I just didn't know how to do it. So it, 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 these occult books are read by teenagers and, and they're far more vulnerable than someone that's 27 years of age. Uh, you mentioned the commercialization. I see things now as being a massive satanic conspiracy. Mm. Uh, I personally believe, even though J.K. Rowling, I'm sure, is very sincere, I believe that she felt her books would help people. I, I, I don't think she wrote just for the sake of entertainment. I think she knows that there are a lot of lonely youths out there and that she's in some way trying to help them, to try and to have some kind of purpose in their life beyond mm. the daily grind. Um, but the, the reality is Satan inspires fiction writers. Satan inspires all the people that are leaders within the New Age movement. And I believe that the same Satan and his evil angels is inspiring business executives to market the occult big mm. time and make it mainstream uh, you've a similar example for ex uh, marijuana here in california uh marijuana is now legal for non-medical purposes what they call recreational marijuana is perfectly legal so when it was legalized you get now business people corporations even invest money into marketing marijuana and i believe that satan and his evil angels are inspiring business people mm. they are inspiring movie screenwriters movie producers they are inspiring the people from hollywood to be promoting these occult teachings because it's through these teachings i believe that satan is endeavoring to take control over planet earth this this is a massive gigantic uh, uh, initiative that has been launched by Satan. It is a conspiracy. I believe absolutely it is. All right. Okay. Well, I hope that through this example so far, by no means exhaustive, we will give you, our viewers, an idea of how these practices are woven into J.K. Rowling's stories about Harry Potter and the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. And we will come up with examples and comparisons to what we believe and what we should do as Christians. So even if you're not a Christian parent, uh, as a viewer, this should be worrying you as much as a Christian parent or a child or even an adult because the agenda we believe behind this uh, sweet glaze of exciting entertainment we believe is evil and it will have an impact on you either you're a christian or not it doesn't really satan doesn't differentiate between uh, christians maybe satan is attacking more christians than secular people but will let's dive more into the books of jk rowling's stories about harry potter as, as we know here, there are seven books here, uh, okay, that comes uh, later. Let's take this uh, article here for, from uh, LA Times, Los Angeles Times here, uh, which you have sent me, advertising a supplement promoting the launch of Harry Potter attraction. Could you tell a little bit more about this? Yes, this is another example of how business corporations are now promoting the occult. Um, I live in Los Angeles and over there in North Hollywood, you've got the uh, Universal City Studios that has this major tourist attraction that they've built there. They're uh, competing with uh, Disneyland over there in Disney World in Anaheim. And uh, they have got this massive Harry Potter attraction. Thousands of people are visiting these attractions. A lot of children, a lot of adults. It's just more promoting the occult. It, it, and it is big business. Uh, J.K. Rowling was the first ever author to have a net worth of over $1 billion. 
I mean, you're talking massive, massive amounts of wealth, unprecedented. The, uh, I, I think uh, it was mentioned earlier that uh, in, in Norway, if I'm not mistaken, that the Harry Potter books are the number two best-selling book in the whole of Norway. Number one, thank God, is still the Bible. It's still the top selling book, but in number two is now Harry Potter. So this commercialization of Harry Potter through music, through plays, through uh, t these mo um, TV shows, wherever Harry Potter is mentioned, it is spreading a knowledge of the occult and a fascination of the occult well beyond the series of books that J.K. Rowling produced, well beyond. This is now mainstream, very, very mainstream yeah. material right. that is accepted in our society. Okay, well, this is uh, one of the first books. We're going to cover this a little bit more. Uh, have, you, have you read this book? Well, I've read parts of it. Michael, you've got to realize that this is occult stuff. This, I believe, is coming from an evil spirit, a satanic spirit. It is not easy for me to read this material. I've read yeah. parts of this, but from what I read, it is, it, it's very traditional Wicca sorcery mm. uh, or, or magic. I mean, you know, the title alone, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, there's no hiding that this is a form of sorcery. Although, uh, you know, maybe there's less black sorcery in it and it's more mm. white sorcery, but there's no question. Mm. There's no hiding what, what this material is. And there is yeah. a real world of the occult that has very, very similar teachings and very similar practices. And young children, when they have read Harry Potter, when they become older, they then are tempted by evil spirits towards the real witchcraft, the real Wicca religion that we find in coverns and different types of New Age organizations that are oriented towards the Wicca religion. Hmm. All right. Well, the question is, uh, Will, shouldn't it be easy for you and I as Christians to see the evil within these books? by just reading maybe just a little, maybe just the cover, maybe just reviews of this book, shouldn't be very easy to actually discover that this is actually satanic and we shouldn't have anything to do with these books. We shouldn't give our children these books. We shouldn't watch these movies. Uh, either our children should watch these movies. We shouldn't have these books within our church as the Seventh-day Adventist Church or any other Christian denomination. Shouldn't that be very quite obvious? Michael, the problem is it depends what kind of Christian you are. Mm. There are many, many flavors of Christian and many flavors of Christians. If you're just a nominal Christian, basically goes to church maybe once in a while, perhaps especially for a Christmas Eve service or maybe mm. to celebrate Easter or something, if you're a nominal Christian and you don't know what the Bible teaches, you are going to be deceived by this material. I mean, I was born and brought up as a, a Christian mm. in a conservative Christian family, and I got involved in this stuff. J.K. Rowling claims to be an Episcopalian, an mm. Anglican Christian. So if you don't have a thorough knowledge of what God's word tells you and god's word the holy mm. bible tells you do not get involved in these kind of witchcraft and occult practices very clearly uh, paul in his epistles says that we should have no appearance of evil mm. no appearance of evil so how can you be a true biblical christian and produce books like Harry Potter's books on sorcery. To me, mm. you, you cannot be a, a true Bible-believing, Bible-following Christian. But for nominal Christians out there, I'm sure you would be happy to read Harry Potter books. You'd find them entertaining, well, yeah. and you could be seduced by them. Absolutely. So, 
would we be able to say in uh, new age philosophy kind of thinking that in this case actually ignorance ignorance of the bible would actually lead you to evil absolutely <laughs> yes so absolutely there, yes there, there is some truth in ignorance actually could lead us to to very bad things to evil mm. and as christians becoming yeah, just you being know, nominal christians yeah go ahead yeah satan always mixes truth with error there's no mm. question that ignorance of god ignorance of the teaching of god ignorance of the way of god ignorance of his son the lord jesus christ that came to be the atoning sacrifice from our sins ignorance absolutely is a form of evil mm. and if you are not firmly anchored in the word firmly anchored in faith in jesus mm, christ exactly, then yeah. you are a victim of satan mm. by default you are mm, uh, definition, uh, jesus yeah. said yeah by definition mm. you are you can be seduced by all these right. evil spirits all right you already mentioned this book here i was actually having this slide here from carlos castaneda the power of silence and i, I just want to read i just took from uh, the preview of the book, actually from the introduction, where the writer, Carlos Castaneda, is saying that my books are a true account of a teaching method that Don Juan Matus, a Mexican Indian sorcerer, used in order to help me understand the sorcerer's world. In this sense, my books are the account of an ongoing process which becomes more clear to me as time goes by which is human beings are born with a finite amount of energy. Again, we see this uh, occult thinking, the mm -hmm. energy, Don Juan said, an energy that is systematically deployed beginning at the moment of birth in order that it may be used most advantageously by the modality of the time. So the question is, do we see even if the writer here the book is not really related it's not related to harry potter you know it's not related to jk rowling's but where are the links do we see the links here do we see the terminology and do we see actually the same philosophy hiding behind this book and this writer as well as in the harry potter oh absolutely they are the same philosophical concepts that are mm. described at uh, the same teachings absolutely uh, may i add that carlos castaneda was a professional writer uh, he took a creative writing course at the university of, of california i believe if i'm not mistaken mm. and he had his books published as non-fiction mm -hmm. it was later that researchers discovered that in reality there were fiction works that a lot of what Carlos Castaneda claims in his book visits to the state of Sonora in Mexico to meet these sorcerers there that are known in Spanish by the name Brujo. Uh, these research, researchers ascertained that Castaneda did not do most of what he claims he did in these books, that he was actually a very creative fiction writer, very similar to J.K. Rowling. But J.K. Rowling openly declared her books were fiction, but the content of them is really the reality of neo-pagan witchcraft. On the opposite scale, you have Carlos Castaneda, claims his books were non-fiction but in reality they were fiction but they were describing a real world of wizardry of mm. sorcery of magic uh, ceremonial magic and they have this common theme as you just read uh, this theme of energy this is a very powerful new age teaching that is a bridge between witchcraft and sorcery and conventional new age teachings and eastern mysticism there's the most of the teachings are based upon this concept there is an energy in the universe an energy that permeates all of space and that you need to 
bring your life into harmony with this energy and with this power and that you can use this energy and this power for healing, for success, for financial prosperity, for problem solving, whatever objectives that you have, whatever your needs are, if you can only attune or harmonize or use this energy, you can be blessed in your life. This is a very common teaching uh, that spans the sorcery of Carlos Castaneda and goes into witchcraft, Wicca, astrology, numerology, mm. mystical powers, uh, using talismans mm. for healing, using different kind of objects for healing, uh, teraphim, as they are called in the Bible. Uh, all of these occult teachings are, are primarily based on this idea of their egg, their being existing, this universal or mystical energy that you can use to bless your life, basically. And, and it's true. There is an energy out there that these people are using. But after being involved in this for 12 years and being rescued from that deception, it is my assertion that this power is coming from Satan and his evil angels. I don't believe there is any inherent mm -hmm. healing power in crystals or talismans or amulets mm -hmm. or in the incantations and rituals of witchcraft, what we call Wicca religion. Uh, those rituals and the incantations, they're not the real source of the power. The power is coming from the evil angels that are present in those rooms or present mm. wherever this paraphernalia is practiced. And it is those evil angels that these Wiccans sense and that they think is a divine power. They think this is coming from God, but it is a real power. There absolutely is a mystical power that is in our world that produces sometimes healing. It seems to appear to produce healing, but I never had any permanent healing in mm. the New Age. I had many of these chakra balancing healing sessions, and sometimes it would seem that symptoms would subside for a short while, but then it seemed to be that they would come back. Mm. And I think that is probably quite common within this realm of the occult and, and especially in the healing that there isn't any true healing but there is energy and you will feel this energy you'll get a buzz from it you can have light that seems to shine inside your brain or your whole body sometimes when meditating i experienced this beautiful soothing warm energy and had these mystical experiences and visions they are all real but the source of that power is not coming from divine power. It's coming from Satan and his evil angels. And it is right. very, very deceptive. And that should actually become for you and I, and again, for our viewers, of course, we see all the reality through our Bible glasses. This is how we see reality. And we invite you and we hope that you will take the Bible glasses because the Bible is the only source of truth outside of our real but if we go back to you, what you've just described here, so these human beings are born with a finite amount of energy. Could we just summarize it as being a common denominator in between all these occult and satanic different kind of healings, methods, religions, you know, whatever you want to call it, like you just mentioned, chakra, yoga you know, different kind of healings. You find this common denominator within this. So this could be actually an easy tool to actually deploy or discover where it actually this is coming from. Because comparing that with the Bible, comparing that with the Christian God, the God of the Bible, how would God work through your life in terms of healing? you know, in terms of having a happy life, you know, because this is what people are seeking for. You know, when people are reading books like Harry Potter, they see entertainment and fun and exciting. 
Some people, when joining Wicca, as you just mentioned before, they, they seek happiness. Maybe they seek to fulfill this emptiness, which you also had in your life. You, find, you actually did find that in the New Age movement. But compare with what is the alternative that comes from the Bible, compare it with this, what we've just covered so far. Yes, in, in the Bible, there is also energy or power, mm. and we call it the Holy Spirit, and it, it is real, and it is the Holy Spirit from God that can bring healing in our lives. The Holy Spirit can inspire us and bring solutions to our problems. The Holy Spirit can bring peace and joy in our lives, but we don't receive that Holy Spirit through practicing occult mm. rituals and incantations and uh, uh, lighting candles on the floor and doing some kind of dancing. That's not how the Holy Spirit comes. The Holy Spirit comes as we study the words of Jesus Christ in the Bible, study yeah. what Jesus mm. had to teach, study about his life, study what scripture has to tell us about how we ought to live moral teachings moral principles principles of honesty principles of love and compassion and kindness mm. and as we fix our eyes upon jesus as we fix our thoughts upon jesus as we order our life according to the mm. teachings of yeah. jesus according I to mean, the teachings yes. of the gospel then the holy spirit is a mm. mystical power in a sense mm. it's not visible it's not yes. something we can see but we can feel the peace and the joy that does come from the holy spirit and we can experience uh, blessings in our life that god does provide us as we become children of god God, yes, does provide for us, and he does bless us. We, we still sometimes, as Christians, have to face sickness. We have to face mm. challenges. We do have to face satanic power in our lives that tries mm. to deceive us and discourage us. It, it's a battle. Christianity is a war. It's a battle. Yeah. But we fight the good fight of faith. Mm. But the blessing is we have got God, the true God, the true creator, of the heavens and the earth is on our side. Those that practice Wishka, they have the goddess on their side, the horn god, also known as Pan, the consort of the goddess. But these are satanic mm. spirits. They're not real god. They can't really bring success in your life. I, I don't know J.K. Rowling, whether she's a happy person. I mean, I'm sure having a net worth of well over a billion dollars is going to bring a, a certain sense. I mean, that can mm. buy a lot, but are you really happy? Are you going exactly. to experience mm. eternal life? Mm -hmm. uh, what if what if you do write these creative occult books and you have a net worth of over a billion? You're not going to take that to heaven with you. Mm. Are you going to be in heaven? Are you going to be saved? Are you truly going to have eternal life? Another major teaching of the occult is the idea that you will have life eternal, immortality. Uh, the New Age Center that I was a member of, we were teaching that if we were faithful to our teachings, we would experience immortality in this lifetime. But my primary teacher, Muriel Isis, passed away, I think it was around 2004, if I'm not mistaken, the teachings that she received from the evil spirits were deceptions. She was mm -hmm. promised eternal life and immortality in this lifetime, but she never experienced it, it never because it's happened. a lie. It's right. a deception. Yeah, okay. it's just the same old promise of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Exactly. He told the you will surely not die, mm. but it's a lie. Mm. And you faith, faith of course, uh, being right. lost eternally. Right. Terrible, so, so terrible, the, what a deception. The core issue here, what is at stake, is that to differentiate in between the real energy and the false energy, you know, the real God and the false God, the real issue here, it's actually ignorance, to get back to the New Age philosophy, because as Christian, if we base our relationship with God on not actually knowing God, who he is, what is the real Holy Spirit energy 
then we will, per definition, be deceived. Just to summarize yes, yeah. what you, you've just yeah. said here. And it, it, Michael, I would say it, it's beyond an issue of ignorance and knowledge, too. You can actually have a th theological knowledge of the Bible. You can have mm -hmm. an intellectual knowledge. But that has to be combined with faith. Mm -hmm. You have to have trust that the God of the Bible is the true creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the true creator of mankind. He's the creator of everything that we have on planet earth. The beautiful seas, the rivers, the waters, the trees, the plants, the animals. We have to have faith that the Bible is the word of God. This is God's revelation to mankind. Each mm. of us actually has a choice. Um, we, I, you can be a scholar and you can have a knowledge of scripture, but yet not believe it. I yeah. choose. It's a matter of choice. I personally choose to believe that the Bible is accurate. It is, by following the Bible, my life has been better than it ever was mm. following the occult teachings. And before that, just following a deist, secular life. Uh, my life is far better now than it ever was. Yeah, I still have some challenges, Amen. especially yeah. when you do webcasts like this. Mm. You know, Satan's not happy that mm. his kingdom and his deception is being exposed. Well, so anyone exactly. in my shoes, you, you do face satanic mm -hmm. assaults and attacks.